So today we're going to start moving into molecular structure. We're going to wrap up atomic structure using what we know about where electrons are positioned and the number of valence electrons, the most important attribute of an atom as we um, start to move into molecules. And so what we're going to do is start by drawing molecules as Lewis dot structures, and then we're going to progress into more modern ways of depicting molecules, things that are approaches that are more practical and useful and still uh, used every day. Okay, so Lewis dot structures. Uh, Lewis dot structures are one of three methods of drawing molecules. And what it really utilizes is it's a method that, um, or a method of representing atoms. Where valence electrons are drawn as little dots around the atom. And this word is drawn, excuse me. Sorry about that. Okay, so for example, let's look at the most simple example and that is hydrogen with a zero charge. So if we had hydrogen with a zero charge, we could put a one. The atomic mass isn't super relevant here. We just need to know the total number of electrons that we're dealing with. And we're going to only consider the valence electrons as we're depicting these things. So if you recall from a previous lecture, you may already know how many valence electrons are in the neutral element hydrogen because it's in group one. Right, it's a group one element, which says, which says that it should have one valence electron. Now, if we look at this, we've actually already figured out how many valence electrons it has, and we looked at the total electron count um, because the hyd hydrogen atom only has electrons housed in the one s orbital, that s orbital in the first shell. So if it only puts electrons in the first shell, the first shell is actually its valence shell and those electrons are its valence electrons, in this case one electron. So we have one valence electron. Okay, we figured that out. So now if we have a Lewis dot structure, for one H zero, it would look like an H atom, the atomic symbol, plus a dot for each valence electron. So the atomic symbol, which you could also think of as the atomic letter, I guess, the atomic symbol, and a dot for each valence electron. So that's hydrogen, an H with a dot, H for hydrogen, dot for its one electron. The thing we wanna do as we move into other elements is we don't want to forget the various rules. In particular, we don't want to forget the Pauli exclusion principle and Hund's rule. sloppy there. Exclusion and Huns. So we don't want to forget the principle and the rules as we're drawing more complex Lewis dot structures. Let's look at an example of that right away. So our favorite element, carbon, and we'll pick on the neutral carbon, I guess carbon 12, zero charge. I'll write it this way. It's good practice. Okay. So carbon-12 with a zero charge has how many electrons? It has six electrons total. Not all of those are valence electrons because some are in the first shell, some are in the second shell. We recall that it's a group four element or you could write out the electron configuration 1s2, then 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz0, for example. And we would see that we have 
four valence electrons. Okay, so what we want to kind of think about is, is something a little bit strange. I know that when we look at the electron configuration, we like to put two electrons into the s orbital, but we're actually going to spread the electrons out all over the carbon atom to prepare for bonding. So as we look at as we look at converting these atoms and their Lewis dot structures into molecules, we want to spread the electrons out as much as possible to prepare for bonding. Okay, so for carbon, what that means is we're going to have four sort of spots around the carbon atom where we're going to put one dot, as opposed to, and really, this isn't so incorrect, because if we're thinking about the atom sitting by itself, maybe you want to do something like this, and you say that two of the electrons are paired up maybe in the s orbital, Yes, the orbital is lower in energy than the various p orbitals. So we could put one, we could put one in each of the p orbitals. So we have two electrons sitting by themselves, but then we have two electrons paired up in that s orbital. I can't really say that you're too incorrect, but what we're going to see as we progress through uh, our structures and uh, these lectures and look at how atoms become molecules and how they bond together to form covalent bonds, we see something that's called orbital hybridization were orbitals that were once different in energy, like the s and the p orbitals mixed together to become equal in energy, allowing us to spread the electrons out much more, um, um, spread the electrons out much more and in effect kind of prepare for bonding and accomplish bonding. So what I'm getting at is between these two Lewis dot structures, I like a Lewis dot structure where we spread the electrons out more for carbon. Now, that might seem confusing, I understand it. It will be with until we get a little bit of practice, but the nice thing is there's not too many elements we're going to play around with. It's for the most part going to be hydrogen, carbon, and these, and these other two elements. So we have nitrogen zero, we could do the same analysis. I'm going to remind myself that that's a group five element. We would see that in the periodic table. So we have five valence electrons. Now, what's interesting is as we spread the electrons out to prepare for bonding what we're going to notice and there's good reasons for this but just suffice it to say at this point what we're going to notice is we don't really have more opportunities than than four in terms of coordinating atoms to uh, atoms uh, bonding to other atoms to our atom of interest so we have nitrogen we can only really bond at most four other elements to it. So we only have like four spots around the atom to put electrons. I like to think about it as just north, south, east, and west that we can hold electrons. So what I'm getting at is we've got electrons to the west, to the east, to the south. What about to the north? Here we're going to fit not one but two electrons. These electrons are paired up. Okay. Some alternatives you could think about are, and hopefully what you're, if what, what I kind of alluded to, something like this, where we've got electrons spread out as much as possible, that doesn't really work. And we'll see why that doesn't work in other lectures, but this is um, not a possibility for us because we can only have four atoms. Um, so only position electrons in four spots around the atom. Okay, so you can't spread them out more than four. You can't have five spots to put electrons. As soon as we get up to four, we're going to start to see things pair off. Okay, another alternative possibility you could consider is let's put two electrons to the south, one electron to the west, east, and north. Um, this is okay. This is okay. So these two possibilities are okay. You could put two electrons to the west, one electron to the east, north, and south. Conversely, one electron to the east, 
two, excuse me, two electrons to the east, then one electron to the north, south, and west. Okay, so you can move the, the paired electrons around the atom, but we want to just not exceed the number of four. Okay, so there's a Lewis dot structure for nitrogen. What about oxygen zero? Oxygen zero is in group six. So it has six valence electrons. Now what we see is if we have six valence electrons, oh, that is an ugly O, okay. Six valence electrons, we can put one electron to each of the north, south, east, and west. We've spread them out as much as possible. And then what we can do is we can put the last two electrons, we can pair them up at any position so long as we don't exceed three electrons at any one position. Okay, so each position that is north, south, east, and west, these are Willoughby terms, I guess. So each position can hold zero to two electrons. We wanna spread the electrons out as much as possible. So situations where we have zero electrons, that would be like hydrogen, where we just had the one electron, then we could put it anywhere, north, south, east, east or west, but we don't have any more to add. So we can't um, have any paired electrons in that particular atom. For oxygen though, we have two pairs. Those two pairs could each be positioned in various places. The last group are the halogens. So the halogens would be chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine. Halogens all have something in common, and that is they have seven valence electrons. Seven valence electrons, and if we look at how to position those, we'll pick on chlorine. Now it doesn't matter how many total electrons it has, we go right to group seven. That's the halogen group. We know that it has seven electrons. I'm not gonna worry about all the other electrons, just the valence electrons. And for chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine, we're going to put one electron in each of the positions, but we still need to fill seven. So five, six, seven. As an example, you can move the one unpaired electron at any position so long as the other spots are paired up. So we have here seven dots total. Sorry about that, my pen stopped working for a second. Let me get the notes back in front of us. Okay, so the notes are back in front of us. We have chlorine with its seven dots, we have oxygen, and really, these are the only elements we're going to work with as we build up molecules. There's another important group, though, that is the noble group, the noble elements. These elements are characterized by having eight electrons around um, or in their valence shell, so eight valence electrons. And since we can only put electrons at four positions, north, south, east, and west, each of the four positions is going to be paired up to get us to eight. Now, another caveat as you're drawing Lewis dot structures of elements is that we, we kind of want to um, have the elements, uh, or excuse me, the electrons as close to the atomic symbol as possible. So sort of, uh, I'm going to just write here, bad technique, would be if we had neon, for example, and if we put electrons kind of spinning out. Instead, we want those pairs flat pressed up against the atom. So this is kind of a quick and dirty look at drawing Lewis dot structures of atoms. In future lectures, we're going to look at something called the octet rule and how that allows us to see how these individual atoms can bond. And hopefully we can make sense of why we have electrons, instead of pairing up into s orbitals and leaving a p orbital vacant, for example, um, we have these electrons sort of spreading out around the atom as much as possible. Okay.